Hello and welcome to this follow-up tutorial of APIs in Node-RED. In a prior video, we saw how we can integrate weather data into our Node-RED project by using a pre-made open weather map weather node. Now we're going to go a step further and we are going to integrate any API that you could find out there in the free floating space of the internet. For that, we will going to use this list on GitHub uh, of free public APIs. Usually there are a lot of APIs available and if you search for it, you will find a lot of paid services which charge money for the usage of APIs. But there are a lot of free APIs out there that can do pretty much anything you will need or you will uh, want to integrate into your project. So just find a public API database. I'm going to use this one on GitHub. And our goal is now to, to create a currency exchange uh, program, which can give us the value of different currencies based on one base currency. We're going to do that by searching in this file or in this uh, web page for currency. And as you can see, we have currency exchange. And then we find different uh, selections of API we can use, like for example, the Czech National Bank API. The one I found now is the currency API, which uh, is quite good because first of all, it doesn't need any authorization which means that we don't need any account and we can test the API really easily. And there are also no rate limits. So it means we can request as much as we want without any uh, block. Generally, these, are, these uh, authorization-less APIs are quite convenient to test, but a lot of them, they do require API keys which will be also a bit more complicated to integrate into to the project. That's why we're going to do this in another video. Right now, let's click on the currency API. And here we will find information about how we have to use this API. Generally, an API request is nothing else than just a web page, or it looks the same as when you would open a web page, HTT, HTTP, or HTTPS, uh, with some with some API uh, with some IP in the back. And here you find the description where to put parameters of which uh, information you want to gather from the API. Usually, you will always also find examples in which the creators of the API have listed a example of how to use it. Down here, for example, get currency list with Euro as base currency. This is one request that we can just copy like this and we will get the data into our project. What we can do first now is we can copy this and because there's, this is an API without authorization needed, this is really convenient and we can test this API by just putting it into our browser, into the search bar, and we will see a web page, blank one, with just some numbers on it. It's formatted, of course, in JSON, will appear, and we can instantly uh, see if the API works and how it will work and how it will return. If you need authorization, you can also test endpoints, of course, but it will be a bit more complicated. So since we already copied it, we can take this right to our node red. We will start as always with the glorious inject node. And next, what we are going to pick is the HTTP request, this one right here. And last but not least, we will need a debug. I will connect this up and then let's double click into the HTTP request. Here we will insert the URL and we will set the uh, payload to the return payload to JSON object, which will mean that we get back a 
fully parsed and fully usable JSON object. I will deploy this and I will press on the timestamp inject node and we will see a message appears right here, which is a JSON object that we can use directly further. So let's say we want to see if we can track the USD. So let's see if we find in here in this list the USD. It's right here. So we know that we have here a key which we can get this value from. So let's press on the first button right here, which means to copy the path. And let's use a change node and say that we want to set msg.payload to the value msg.payload.euro.usd. Deploy again, press, and we get a finished number currency conversion from euro to USD right in our Node-RED project. And we can use it further to display this, for example, on a dashboard. So let's do this now. Let's get a text output for our dashboard, assign it to some group. And let's say, call it Euro to USD. Let's inject it so it writes it on our dashboard. Let's open the dashboard. And we can see this value has been successfully copied to our dashboard and displayed to the user. Next, let's see how we can change this endpoint right here. So we can, for example, not see uh, in Euro as a base currency, but in US dollars. To do this, we need to change up a little bit how we uh, use the HTTP request. In particular, we need to add a function in front of it right here and let's remove the url the static url from here open the function call it um, url generator and let's say we get an input from msg.payload which will say in it says uh, either USD or Euro. And based on this, we're going to change our endpoint. So let's define an endpoint. This is our default endpoint right here, but we want to change now this section right here. So this is our basic default endpoint if nothing changes. And let's say if input is equal to USD URL equals to and not Euro anymore, but USD. And then we set msg.payload to URL. No, excuse me, of course, not msg.payload, but now we need to search for the right place to put this URL so the next node will understand what to do or where the URL is to be found. So for that, we need to check first the documentation of the HTTP request node. We do this by clicking on the book up here. And we will see here uh, that we can use the URL property of the node. So msg.url, which we can then set to URL. And now just to be sure not to uh, make any mistakes with some further configuration unwanted, I use usually always overwrite the whole msg object so only the url the url parameter is remaining like this you can overwrite the whole msg object 
no payload will be forwarded to nothing at all except URL. So this ensures we don't have any unwanted information in our MSG object. So let's deploy this and we need to change here that we have either USD or Euro. Right now we had Euro. So let's go in here and let's change this to a string and call it USD. So now this will deploy USD into msg.payload and let's set another debug right here because this change node, of course, it won't trigger because the data structure will be different when we have USD as a base currency. So let's press here. And as you can see, we get further information here about the object. And we see that now it says USD over here and not Euro anymore. And let's set it back to Euro. and check again what happens now. And here we have again the Euro property, which is the base currency now. So this is how you change parameters. Of course, now we can use this also to change uh, the functionality of our dashboard. And we can, for example, use a text input We can say here USD or Euro. And we will set it to home and default also. Let's go to the dashboard. This one is unused. And right now we have here a text field and let's enter USD. And as you can see, some wrong information comes out because we have here a change which only acts if the object looks like this. But because now we have different parameters, we need to be careful. Let's put in Euro back and when we put it back, it works again. So what we need now, we need to check if we have a property of Euro in our object or, or if we have only a property of USD in our object and based on that we need to decide what to do with the data. So this is important with any when you work with uh, APIs you need to be sure about what you get from the API, how the data will be structured and what you have to do if some data arrives which you don't know what to do with. So a good thing to work with is the switch. The switch offers many possibilities to access certain information about your uh, uh, node properties or about your MSG properties. And now what we can do, we can check if msg.payload has a key of Euro and it will do this. And we can say if it has a key or we can even say otherwise, it should put it out on the section number two. So let's copy this one. This one will be USD and Euro. So what it means now, it comes here it sets the URL specific to our needs. Then it goes into the HTTP request. It goes out into the switch, which will decide if it will be US dollar or it will be Euro. And based on that, it will decide to which field it will, uh, to which a change node it will send the information. We can delete one of our uh, text fields and only use one text field so it's not so confusing for the user and in this text field based on our uh, configuration there will be the data in the app so let's use usd as you can see 
it put it to the turned value of euro let's put again euro so let's see if this is valid or if this value makes sense so let's calculate one divided by 1.06 so this would be around 0 0.9 0 0.94 let's check again so we see 0 0.94 so this worked and this api functions correct and perfect thank you for watching this tutorial if you have any suggestions for content, please leave them down in the description.